Hey everybody, we've reached the middle of the week. Thank you for joining me today for this New Testament devotion. We are in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 16. So I hope you have your Bible open. You've already read the chapter, perhaps even made some notes in your journal about what God uh, said to you. When when I was reading this chapter, um, what really spoke to me was how you and I can face tests or challenges from two different directions, two sources. One is the outside and uh, one is the inside. We can face challenges from our enemies. We can also, um, we can also um, face danger and challenges from our friends, our family, from ourselves, from, from within. First on the outside, this, this chapter begins, chapter 16, with the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to Jesus in verse 1 to test him. Okay, They were putting Jesus to the test, and he responds to it. And afterward, in verse 6, he said uh, to his disciples, watch out and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. You remember that uh, leaven is, is, is what you put in bread to cause it to rise. Uh, today, we just use self-rising flour, but if not, you have to put something in it. You eat something, it'll cause it to spread, to grow, to, to, to rise. And, and Jesus said to his disciples, watch out for the leaven of the Pharisees and, and the Sadducees. And then also down in and verse 12, after talking with his disciples, because at first they didn't know what he meant by that. What do you mean, watch out for the leaven, the bread of the Pharisees and Sadducees? And then he explained it to them a little bit more. Uh, and then in verse 12, they understood the disciples finally got it. They understood that he did not say to them, beware of the leaven of the bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. One of the dangers that you and I face as believers comes from the outside. It's from false teachers. Uh, Bad theology, uh, worldly philosophy. It's what our students often face when they go to the university. Uh, It's what we face when we go to the movies uh, and listen to the Hollywood crowd, etc., etc. The leaven that, that once it takes root in somebody, it grows. And so Jesus says, you need, you need to be careful. You need, you need to watch out. He said in verse six, watch out and beware of, watch out and beware of the leaven of false teaching, false doctrine, false philosophy, worldly ideas that contradict, disagree with God's word, God's truth. In other words, doctrine matters. Teaching matters. What we believe matters. Sound Bible teaching, systematic theology, systematic Bible teaching is critical. And don't buy the lie of our modern culture that it doesn't, that what you believe doesn't matter. Jesus said it does. Don't allow that nonsense to grow in your life. And one of the ways you deal with it is by feeding yourself truth. Sound Bible teaching. Word of God. One of the, that's one, one of the many reasons I'm so thankful for our D group ministry here at First Baptist or our New Testament reading plan that you're participating in right now is that we can feast on the Word of God rather than worldly theology and philosophy. Now, the second risk we face, the second danger, the second challenge comes from within, from within ourselves, from our friends, our family, those who are close to us. In this chapter, um, after Jesus talks with the disciples about being aware of looking out for the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees, their false teaching, he then, starting in verse 13, has, has a, an intimate conversation with, it, with his disciples. They're in the northernmost region of Galilee uh, in a mountain, uh, Caesarea Philippi, and he, and he asks his disciples, what does everybody say about me? Who do they think I am? What's the rumor? And they tell him. And then he says, but who do you say that I am? And Peter gives that famous answer in verse uh, verse 16, that you are the Christ, the son of the living God, and, 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 and so on. And after talking about that and the fact that he's going to establish the, the church in verse 21, look at it, verse 21, it says, from that time, beginning then, at that moment, from that time, Jesus began to show his, show his disciples that he must go up to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and be raised on the third day. So he begins telling them about about his crucifixion and his resurrection. But notice what happened. Verse 22, Peter, notice how Peter responded. Peter took him, took Jesus aside, and began to rebuke him. 
Can you imagine rebuking Jesus? Saying, God forbid it, Lord. This shall never happen to you. We don't want you to die. Jesus responded to Peter in verse 23. He turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. He called Peter Satan. Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. Peter, you're causing me to stumble, to trip and fall. For you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but man's. See, Peter was sincere when he confronted Jesus. He didn't want Jesus to die. But Jesus said, Peter, you don't get it. You're only focused on what you want, not what God wants. God's plan, the Father's plan, my plan, Peter, is for me to die so you can live. And I get it. Peter was real. Peter was sincere. But he was out of touch with what God was doing and what God wanted. And sometimes when you and I try to live in the will of God, we try to do what God's calling us to do. Sometimes the people who love us, the people who are close to us, don't want us to do it. Not because they don't care, not because they're evil, because they don't get it or because they're going to miss you. For instance, uh, a, a parent might struggle if their their child is called feels, feels called to, to ministry and, and God wants to move them on the other side of the country or God wants them to be a missionary in another country. And it's God's plan, but those parents love them and they want them close, but they say, no, don't do that. I don't want, can't you find another one? And, and, and what he's saying is we put, if we're not careful, we, 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 we react to what we want, not what God wants. And when we do that, we create stumbling blocks for people who are trying to live in the will of God. You parents out there, you should want your children to live in the will of Jesus Christ more than anything. You should want your children to live in the will of Jesus more than have good grades. Want your children to live in the will of Jesus for their life more than get a good job. Want your children to live in the will of God. Follow the will of God for their life more than you want them to have a great career and be financially successful. But if you're not careful as a mom or dad, as a grandmother, grandfather, you will put what you want ahead of what God wants. And that's the danger we face from within from people who really care, but yet create a stumbling block to somebody actually obeying the will of God. And let's just be honest, none of us really want to do that, do we? None of us want to be that stumbling block for the people in our lives. Sometimes it means sacrifice. I remember the day Monisa and I got in my little Datsun, our little Datsun, backed out of our driveway and started the journey to Sumter, South Carolina back in 1984 leaving Kentucky, leaving family, moving to another state to follow God's will in ministry. And I can remember looking in that rearview mirror and seeing my mom standing in that driveway crying as we drove off. Sometimes, well, what, what does Jesus say? Immediately after his conversation with Peter in verse 24, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, for my will, for my kingdom, for my purpose, will find it. Don't stand in the way of anybody following the will of God, even if it means you have to sacrifice some. Because in the long run, it's worth it. In the long run, listen, Jesus is worth it. Jesus is worth it. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.